could destabilize things. This, this is a matter of rules mattering, okay? The law is the law. It says what it says. And they who knew the law and professed to understand the law by their own understanding were told by Jesus that they had become whitewashed tombs, safe, sanitized repositories of death. All of these things accompany language that talks about hardness of heart. Okay? Whether it's their pride, their self-reliance, their control. It's, it's those same people who say, hey look Jesus, you, I know every verse of Over a Thousand Tongues to Sing, and there are a lot of them. And I can sing them without looking at the book, and, and, and I, I, I even wash my hands just like the law says I should after service, and we have that coin in anything. And Jesus says, well, Isaiah mentioned the people that honors God with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. I just wonder, Jesus seems to be saying, I wonder if pride gets in the way of our life. If pride gets in the way of letting something go that we ought to let Jesus have. And just so we don't think that uh, it's just the Pharisees, there is that scene in Mark's Gospel when the, the disciples witness this amazing act by Jesus. He feeds thousands of people, and then they get in the boat, and Jesus stays behind. And on the way across the, the lake, a great storm comes, and Jesus is sneaking up behind them, um, looking in on how things are going, and they aren't going well. And the, uh, the disciples are scared witless, and we are told they are astounded. And then Mark slips in this line that says, and they don't get it because of their hardness of heart about the feeding of the multitudes. What? They don't, their hearts are hard, they don't understand Jesus' miracle, and so they're panicking in the present. Oh. Oh. We still get surprised when Jesus shows up in the middle of a crisis. We know don't we? We have seen with our own eyes the miraculous thing that God can do. We have seen the, the amazing acts of our Lord. And yet, when the crisis comes, we are surprised when Jesus shows up in the middle of it. And to us with hard hearts, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Where two or three of you are gathered there, I will be also. Jesus has provided for those whose hearts can get hardened this community. And so they and we want control and safety and predictability, lives we can manage, lives we can understand. And Jesus offers this affair of the heart. Passionate, unpredictable, risky, no safety net, no insurance. The heart transformed by Jesus' love has been filled. Listen how beautifully I love in Romans where Paul says, says it like this. He says, Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Holy Spirit comes into our hardened hearts and makes stone turn to flesh. So that, so that hearts transformed and hearts that love as Jesus loved are prone to swell for others and not to shrink from them. Our hearts are prone to risk themselves and not protect themselves. Our hearts are open to compassion, not prone to contempt. 
Our hearts are set to forgiveness and not to fear. Joy and not jealousy. In short, our hearts have to echo John the Baptist when he said, I must decrease and you must increase. Pour into our hearts your love through the Holy Spirit. And it may be that those of us who have been walking this road longer have more trouble with this than those whose conversions are still fresh. They still understand that this whole thing is a surprise, that this whole grace business does not come to those who deserve it, but it comes to those like them who are confused and bumbling and muddling. And those of us who've been at it a while can think, we got this gig figured out. And we can cease to be surprised by Jesus who shows up in unlikely places. Our hearts have to be held. Sometimes our hearts have to be broken and reshaped after Jesus' heart. And I don't know what demons may be clinging to your heart today. I don't know what holes may be in your heart that the Holy Spirit can fill when it is poured in. But I do know this, that hardness of heart is a condition that Jesus has seen before and Jesus has overcome before. It was not only in those who, who were aligned against him, but it was in those who were doing their best to follow him. And those bumbling, stumbling fools, the disciples, followed along behind Jesus, having their hearts broken and recreated, until finally they could sing as those who have been led, as those who have been healed, as those who could sing like Jesus has actually walked beside them. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on. Precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. you who have seen our hearts for what they truly are. Look upon the brokenness of our hearts and mend them so that they may be filled to overflowing with your Holy Spirit and the love that transcends our understanding. And if our hearts have grown callous or weary, break them, O oh God. 
break our hearts and reshape them after your own heart. In the days and weeks and months to come, give us the courage to lay down what is not your will for us and to take up your holy surprises, whatever they may be. If there are ways that can happen within the ministries of prayer in this congregation, I pray, God, that you would guide those here to commit to praying with one another, praying for one another, and praying for your will to be done in all things. We pray, O oh God, because you have invited us to wait upon you and to be raised up to newness of life for anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Make us new, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen.